but the great venture of getting the cup of tea actually implies a lot of transitional procedures, right? Like boiling, boiling the kettle, putting it in the, getting the tea bag, getting it in the thermos, waiting until it kind of brews. So it's okay. It's a and you're live. You're live on YouTube, Leonid. Oh, sorry. so <laughs> so I'm gonna invite Graham on to start Bio Ten Sacred Tea Party Season Two, Episode Seven. Oh yeah. Oh, I think I'm doing that part. Oh, Susan. Oh, I've got my all sticky notes mixed up. Go ahead. <laughs> well, <laughs> a, a lovely and slightly confused hello. Um, and welcome to the Bio Tensegra Tea Party. Uh, we are at number, what is it? Two point, who knows the number? I don't. Seven. Seven. Um, and we will be looking at common pitfalls and misunderstandings that we've all sort of uh, experienced on the road to learning biotensegrity um, today. So um, I'm Susan Lowell de Solorsino, coming to you from the last United States colony of Washington, D.C. And I'm Graham Scar from Nottingham in the U.K. And I'm Chris Morita Clancy, coming to you from Deep Cove, which is just outside of Vancouver, Canada, unceded territory of the Coast Salish Nation. So it's our intention to promote and share biotensegrity with as many people as possible and to include all of you in this mission. The Biotensegrity Tea Party is an all volunteer production. We couldn't do it without you guys uh, of the Stephen M. Levin Biotensegrity Archive, a not-for-profit not organization whose mission is to educate raise public awareness and build community in the field of biotensegrity. Also to foster and forward discovery, research and understanding in the fields of science, health and medicine. So somebody like to introduce our volunteer team? I'm gonna to try to do that and not make too many bumps in, in my road. <laughs> um, we want to thank uh, Lisa Babiak, who's here today from St. Albert, Alberta, um, for her volunteer work helping us today. Gregory Schutte from Lancaster, Pennsylvania in the U.S. Uh, Patricia Hopper from uh, Seattle, Washington, also in the U.S. Um, Gwen Cornish is here from somewhere in Canada, north <laughs> of Idaho. I don't know much. <laughs> somewhere in the, in the woods of Canada. It's wonderful. Anyway, um, and uh, Rachel Tudor is on break, um, but we are grateful for all her service. And today our co-host is, uh, who will be kind of keeping us pointed in the right direction as we go is Mariana Barreto from Mississauga, Ontario. And Mariana is gonna do the toast. Hey, Mariana. Hello everyone, welcome. Uh, yes, so today, I want to dedicate this to all of us who are trying to get this, <laughs> trying to understand what biotensegrity is and for the silly questions that are so important. So for us in the learning process. Cheers. 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 Salud. Dambe. Salud. Okay, shall we move forward with sponsors, Graham? Okay, thanks, Chris. Our Biotensegrity Party is an all-volunteer production of the Stephen M. Levin Biotensegrity Archive and made possible through the generous support of our sponsors, which there's now quite a few. So we'll start with Handspring Publishing in East Lothian, Scotland, who have a wide range of authors and books available for movement and manual therapy professionals. They're offering a discount coupon to those on the Biotensegrity Archive mailing list for those as Zoom participants. Handspring also produce a free regular newsletter, which you can join from their website and provides details of their ongoing webinar series, Elizabeth Larkin. Embodied by Tensegrity with Chris Clancy in Vancouver, British Columbia, who provide an excellent resource for those of you looking to learn more about Biotensegrity. Chris is currently offering a free 14 day free trial for her ongoing course, Biotensegrity Trailblazers, so check out the chat box for more information and all our sponsors. We have Artifact Pro in Madrid, Spain, where you can find wonderfully constructed tensegrity models 
will also offer a discount coupon to our Zoom participants. I have mention of matrix repatterning with George Roth and also integrated by attendance secretary with Lisa Babiuk. I don't have more details of those at the moment, so I'll plug them anyway, because I know they, they plug the tea party. <laughs> and well, uh, Lisa's, Lisa's um, group has, um, Lisa, can you want to just say what you, you guys have up available still? Sure, we have the recordings from our three-day movement symposium. That was three weeks ago. We've extended the access to the recordings and you can find a link to purchase on the Integrated Biotensegrity website. Thanks, Lisa. Thank, thank you. Sorry, Graham. <laughs> That's all right. We spend a lot of time organizing these tea parties. But there's always things pop up at the last minute and aren't on my list. So to carry on, Biotensegrity Congress or I won't say it's in, in uh, Portuguese, Biot and Segrity Congress coming from Brazil. We're running a series of workshops for movement teachers and manual therapists from April the 23rd to 25th. We also hear from the, the fasciahub.com who are organizing a full day event entitled The Fascial Foot on Saturday 8th of May with four leading speakers from the world of fascia. John Sharkey, Wilbur Kelsick, Elizabeth Larkham and Philip Beach who will be sharing their latest research at Insights, plus a somatic experiencing session with movement teacher, Rachel Tudor, who will take you into engaging with your feet and lead to a deeper awareness that informs both your practice and your self-care. Early bird tickets for the fasciahub.com event are 35 pounds and currently available until the 5th of April. And you can find details of all our sponsors in the, the Zoom chat. I think that's it. Over to you, Chris. Add one more. Did you talk about pretense? Getpretense.com? I certainly didn't. Okay, so let me talk. just jump in and say that those of you who saw the first tea party of this season, uh, Gerald de Jong uh, has now his store is open. I know people were asking about where can we get one of these. Uh, I've got this one, the I can't remember what it's called, the shapeshifter. And it's available as is the tower that can also be an arch. He's only got, he only had nine of those as of the day I received the email, which was maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. And Gerald has also given us a code, a discount code, which is in the chat box for those of you who are here on Zoom. And if you're here on YouTube, hi, thanks for joining us. Give us a like, share this out. Uh, we really appreciate all the support you're doing that way. We'll be watching the chat box there and bringing your questions, your comments over to the Zoom session. Anything else, Susan, to say to our YouTube audience or before we move on to Mariana? It looks like uh, Eileen has put in the um, code for the chat and I think I have a delivery at the door. So I think we're ready to turn it away and turn it over to Mariana. <laughs> That's perfect timing. Thanks, Susan. Go ahead, Mariana. I'll be here for anything you need me for. Yeah, and well, hopefully Susan will be back as well. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm really excited uh, to to show to present here today, and I don't know why, but I was labeled that that guy. So I'm gonna be playing the role of that guy, and I think I deserve it. Um, I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> do, I need, do I need wait, please, please, please wait. So we, I'm gonna share quickly uh, my screen, and I'm gonna tell you why I believe I am that guy. Okay. You, I don't know if you know my story, and I'm gonna to try to summarize 22 years in one minute. If I can make this presentation move, yes. So I wanted to help kids with cerebral palsy. I did what I had to do. I became a physical therapist. My thesis was about cerebral palsy. I decided I wanted to work like in high technology labs, uh, analyzing pathological gait. And then in 2000, um, this is what I cannot see my slide, sorry. Okay, in 2009, this is me, my face of this is not working. There's something missing, this is not working. Then I heard, and I cannot move my slide. I heard about this guy. Not that guy, but this guy who is Leonid Bloom, who is doing something different and he's getting results. That brought me to move 
from my beautiful, warm Venezuelan weather to the beautiful, super cold Canada's weather. So I could learn from him and I could work for him actually. And you see, at one point in 2011, I told him, dear Leonid, please don't use spasticity and rigidity as if they are the same because they are not. So this is me, physical therapy, judging how he's using the words. And then he says, dear Mariana, we are talking about transanatomical, read about biotensegrity. 2011 was the very first time in my life that I heard the word biotensegrity. So there you go, Mariana, you have to learn about something new. So I started doing my best trying to find the information and learning from this guy. So I thought I understood this. So this is 2014. Since then, many things have happened. I have tried to do everything it's possible and available to learn this. I went to Vancouver, the symposium. I've taken all the courses that are available about this topic. And this is me, January this year. This is a picture that I actually sent to Susan. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I need help. So I believe I deserve to be that guy today. And I'm gonna start with um, hopefully a series of questions to the panel, like to all of you in the board. The questions that I would probably ask anytime and the questions that we sometimes we are afraid to ask here in this uh, uh, Zoom meetings. And I just wanna tell you something. We are so lucky that we are in such a beautiful and welcoming community that we can ask the question, we can, we can ask those silly questions, we can get to talk to the experts, we can get to talk to Dr. Levin that is right here with us. So how lucky we are, right? And I'm gonna start with the very, very like most important mistake that I was doing and I didn't know because of course I was, oh my God, this is so good. I'm gonna use this right away, but Number one mistake, how do you spell biotensegrity? Like this is me using biotensegrity before. Okay, so that's one of the things that we see very commonly. Uh, and it, it's a misconception right there because it's not spelled uh, as two words, but as one word. And also it's, it's a noun, it's a common noun. So we are not saying biotensegrity like the study of biotensegrity with capital B, we are saying just the study and now it's not moving the study of biotensegrity like normal and then susan in that picture that i show you the very last one she said mariana you cannot use biotensegrity as as a word to combine with something so she said what do you mean susan she said well imagine biotensegrity is a science imagine biotensegrity is a science so the same as engineer calculus chemistry genetic like you can have all these sciences you cannot just take that word and put it as a descriptions of what you're doing. In my, in that question, that particular question, I wanted to say a biotensegrity assessment. That, that's what I wanted to say. And she said, no, you're gonna say, you're gonna do an assessment informed in the understanding of biotensegrity. The same way that you cannot have like a biology um, exercise or a theology ballet, or like basically what she showed to me was you cannot just combine this word because they don't make sense, okay? So this is the open um, uh, point for me. I'm gonna start sharing now. And the plan hey, is I- Hey, I'm Mariana, go Mariana, yeah. I think that's such a great screen. You should go back to it, that last one. Okay, you wanna add more, sure. <laughs> no, I want to, um, this is great because it's sort of like, can you have anatomy horseback riding? Can you have, biology exercise you can just play with the left and the right can you have chemistry yoga i mean you could if you wanted right can you have uh calculus therapy you know calculus training i mean you could if you wanted but it would either mean something different or it would if what you're trying to say is that your practice of any of the things on the right is informed by your understanding of biotensegrity what you're actually ending up conveying is that your understanding of biotensegrity is still sort of in the very early stages. Would you say, Mariana? Yes, 
that was happened to me. <laughs> and that's what I am. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. We are all learning. And that's, that's the point that I, I think the moment we understand that there is an opportunity for us to advance in this learning process, then we are happy and that's why we're here, right? That's so, great. Good, okay. So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna ask uh, Chris and Leonid, um, maybe Graham, Dr. Yep. Levin, if he wants to. Um, so I'm gonna start kind of asking the questions that I would ask at one point in my life. And I'm hoping to get um, the answers that once I was given, okay? Do I have biotensegrity? as a human being. Like we'll can someone can can someone have biotensegrity? So we're gonna have to maybe round robin this. Lena, do you want to start? Well, I mean, probably I would be the longest, so you know, you, you can. Okay, <laughs> okay, you I can I'll, start. I'll start. <laughs> every every living thing that is living or has ever lived. Um has a sort of biotensegral structural nature in terms of its activity and behavior and, 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 and living. So it's about if, you're, if, if something's alive, then its structure is gonna be uh, biotensegral um, and, it's, and its quality of movement, but it's not something I don't think you have. Can I say I am a biotensegral living being. organism? Being, exactly. I, yes. I think you can. What about, what do you think, Graham? Yes, I agree. I agree with that. You can't have biotensegrity. Biotensegrity is part of who we are, what we are, makes us alive. But it's also what makes slime molds alive. So we have to remember that too. Yes. Okay. I think this is a great opportunity to insert the word biology and biological. Are we biology organisms or biological organisms? There we go. That's I think that, That's exactly the point, right? Is that, you know, the, the, the tricky thing about English, right? Is that you've got two ways of getting an adjective. So one is just by placing two nouns in a row, right? And the other one is just by going directly into the, you know, into the adjectives. So, but take the example, like for example, Tom Myers and his uh, anatomy trains, right? So technically speaking, anatomy trains doesn't, you know, like you would be probably saying anatomical, right? So, and uh, I don't know the entire sort of set of, um, reasoning and implications you know part of it is just maybe commercial part of it uh, just kind of for the label that sticks and so on but uh, i would say that if we are going with the typical use the typical use would be in a proper adjective right so it would be anatomic so if it wasn't for the trademark so you would be going for the anatomical trains, anatomical traits, anatomical whatever, rather than the using the word anatomy in as the adjective in that sense. So I think that the same applies to uh, biot integrity and, and biot integral, right? So biot integral implies a certain perspective, right? So because, you know, like in, in that sense, living body, right? So that's that's an adjective, right? So it's in, in that response, we can even say biomechanical body, but the biomechanical body would imply that you're having this vantage point from which you're interpreting the living bodies, right? So I think that the 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 usage of the word of the, the going directly for the for the adjective as biotin segral as of implying the biotin segral perspective at the at the living body so i think that that's probably the you know at least that feels as the most accurate uh, representation yeah. to me and as the one that kind of least open for uh, you know for Misunderstanding. Sort of misunderstanding yes. or can mis misappropriation, misappropriate use, right? So you see, I'm correcting your bias and security, right? Exactly. I'm, that I'm, was, that I'm, was going I'm, to be my next question. Um, so, yes. Leonid, you, yes. have, 
You have yes. to let Mariana unfold <laughs> her wonderful presentation here. Listen, listen. Yeah, yeah. So she, once, she to, to let her be that that guy, right? So yes, she's I'm that, that guy. guy. I'm that guy. You are this guy. Okay. So um, you the thing is, uh, if you have biotensegrity, which don't, you don't, because you are biotensegral being then I cannot have more or less biotensegrity. I cannot fix my biotensegrity, right? We agree with that, that I cannot yeah. fix my biotensegrity. But if I'm improving the way my system is becoming more energy efficient, what am I improving then? It's not my biotensegrity, it's my- Your functional structure, your okay. energy efficiency, your- um your your sustainable practice the sustainability of your practice the 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 things we learn about as being part of the science you know what i'm what i'm saying uh like i think the fact that that it's about energy efficient sustainable functional structure is a a really important piece and i think when people are moving that way whether they're throwing a baseball or 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 sleeping <laughs> you know, you know, finding a better, a better position for sleeping, whatever it is, they're improving their, their functional ability as a biotensical being. Let me so throw the, it to the someone same, else. The same, for this, on the same line, can I say, uh, I'm finding my biotensegrity? No, right? Because it's the same. It's something, that I, I never lost it, right? <laughs> to right, right. Okay. But look, you see, that's... You lost I lost your awareness of it or you didn't have it. Well, I Look, I think that we have to distinguish several things, right? So one thing, right? One thing is that if we take the basics of the mystery of life, right? And that we don't know where it's coming from and where it's going to, right? Since we're unable to recreate it, right? As the ultimate test of our inability to do so. So then whatever adjectives we're using, so they are actually indicating their perspective right so the perspective as such and in that sense by it in sequel i believe is a perspective so the second question that i want to throw in here which is um kind of going to be a little bit uh, maybe unusual for their uh, you know bio uh, the, for the bio and for the body work and so on audience but i'll i have this simple test right so if you kind of want to test your mathematical or how mathematical you are in a thinking, right? It's a very simple test. So the variable and the constant. So there are three possible relationships between the variable and the constant. So are they different? You know, the participants might ask, you know, like this question themselves and give an answer. Are variable and constant, are they different? Is constant, is there bigger one and variable is a subset of a constant or is the variable is the full set and constant is a subset. So these are three upper three options for you to choose from, right? And the typical thing, which is a main problem in our field is that people think that variable is a variable, constant is a constant. But anyone with semi sort of mathematical training would clearly point out that it's a variable. And a constant is just a degenerate variable, which is basically a subset of variables. So, and that's a very important thing to understand because, you know, like we can see this in medicine altogether that, you know, there is a concept of the disease, but there is a very poorly defined concept of health. So, so you have that... examples. This is good, Leonid, because, because remember that mm, I would say a small percentage of people so far do not know what you're talking about. So give an example. Well, I mean, it's, it's a very simple thing, right? So you see, like we try to, do, you see, even if we try to get these properties, so health according to the WHO, it's the state of blah, 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 blah. You know, let's say it's not just the absence of the disease, but they say the state of their optimal well-being and so on and so on. So which is set as a constant, right? So the key point when we come to the like the the, the the living entities is that they are in time so therefore we have to define them as the variables so 
variables which can which are defined over a certain spectrum right over a certain range and within that range that can take different 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 you know different uh, sort of values right so in that sense what we are actually implying right so we are implying that by its integral perspective since it comes to the uh like the furthest from equilibrium furthest from this kind of biomechanics of from from the, the from the free body diagram is it's furthest as far as you can possibly depart right so that's the that's the limit function there right so in that sense biomechanics is a degenerate subset of bias and security right so it's basically when there all this self stabilization self organization and so on properties have been degenerate to zero then you are your bias and signal indexes indices are at zero so you become biomechanical right okay hold so. oh. yeah <laughs> i'm the guy i'm the guy okay hold on what i want to what i want to ask just to clarify this i my understanding is that even when things are not working the way they should work still by its integrity can very nicely explain what's happening there like exactly. understand okay so even if it's very very wrong and if we can move that as long as you're alive yes yes okay as long so as there's good. something living even if the conditional if, if its condition is not optimal we can use an understanding of biotensegrity to improve our ability to engage our awareness yeah but the mistake sure. that i had and I, i was nicely corrected uh, in this platform was that we cannot improve our biotensegrity because there's nothing to improve in a science like we can improve our understanding of biotensegrity but we cannot improve because that that simply the science that explains that specific phenomenon or something are we okay with that yes i think that you are absolutely right so you cannot improve your bias and security because in that sense it's a noun but in that yeah. respect when well, that's why we are trying probably as i said that's a kind of a tricky thing with english right that you can use both you know like the the noun as an adjective as an and an adjective as an adjective right so but what we typically would be trying to do i believe is to use a proper adjective by it in sigral when we want to characterize their change of spectrum so let's kind of you know take a simple but, but, example yeah 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 but the thing is is that hold on i think mariana has a whole list of things we may have to revisit this subject more than once right Because of course you know what you know we, we always have to be we always have to use the opportunity right so it's just well, that's you know. true let me let me jump in here i just want to read <laughs> patricia's aha she says she writes aha my biotensegrity cannot be fixed because biotensegrity explains the mechanisms of things going right and things going wrong Exactly. So it's a That's variable. It's a variable, right? It's a variable which defines a certain range, right? So you see, and in that sense, we we are defining the biotensegrity the biotensegrity as the description of the process, you know, like that maps it from this domain to this domain, right? It's a kind of it's a mapping function that we are how we explaining the thing. So in other words, Let's put it this way. Let me let me see if I can do it. You tell me if it's wrong. So, yeah. if it's alive, it has a biotensegral structure and nature and behavior. Behavior, right? yes. yes. It has a it, it has a non zero non zero quotient of biotensegral behavior. Yes, kind of this. Yes, I'm I'm that guy. It Keep it simple, please. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you you will convert <laughs> it. You know, yeah, I say I just say that uh, are you just putting the precise thing right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and therefore, I cannot lose my biotensegrity. I cannot fix my biotensegrity. I cannot improve my biotensegrity. I cannot train in my biotensegrity or exercise my biotensegrity or any given number of other things. Yeah, absolutely. No, and, and, and from Carol Boggs, 
Can yeah. you improve the balance of forces if they're not functioning optimally? Well, that's, you see, that's the part from which Susan started, right? So you see, because basically, if we are using a certain label as a vantage point, right? So as a vantage point. So once again, we are, when we're talking about the bite and security, bite and security is a perspective you know, which is a, it's kind of a set of bias in segral perspective at different sort of facets of uh, life processes, right? So in, in that sense, in that sense, what Susan was saying is that when we talk about different kind of compositional things, for example, energy, minimization function, right? So you see, in that sense, we are saying when the energy minimization process is in place, that is compatible with the increase of this bite and signal index, right? So, so you're kind of moving up in the bite and signal range, right? So- Well, it, okay. I don't know, because you're I'm still bite sure and signal. And you're still no. bite and signal. I don't- like, But you see, but guys, but that is, that is the point. You have to, you know, like it's simple. It's, you know, once again, I want to remind mathematics is the language which allows to allows you to give you specific kind of specify categories. It's nothing else than that, right? And kind of trace what you said. So in that sense, if we have, you know, like basic algebra from the sixth grade. So what is a function? This is a thing that maps this variable from this domain to its co-domain. That's what it is, right? So you see, and then but domain but has the range and co-domain has the range. And you are mapping one thing into another. So Leonid, I just want you to understand that not everybody is comfortable. Everybody with went it. to six, everybody went to through the sixth grade, you know? Wait a yeah. minute. We have so many math mean, traumatized here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean that they understand sixth grade math. Even because you have to understand, at least in this country, math is taught in a terrible way. And and so when you start talking about functions and stuff, for a lot of people, their mind is just going to shut down. So okay. I appreciate this. Uh, I appreciate this framework. But what I think we need to do is take it okay. to a so, I, have an, I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea. Okay. 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 Look, look. <laughs> you see, for example. You know, we all understand, for example, the concept of a rainbow, right? So you see that it, it you know, in that sense, we have a spectrum of, of electromagnetic waves, right? So in that sense, whether you are at the ultraviolet or whether you are in, at the infrared, you are still electromagnetic, right? So are we, do we agree uh, on that? I think you should say we still have a color. Yeah. That's the level of this conversation. Yeah, that's great. We still we have a color. We still have a color. <laughs> oh. Okay. No, I I would disagree with that. Okay, I would on. disagree hey, with that Mr. because Bloom, that is. Can Can we go back to 2011? Yes. Let's Please? go and let's go back. Let's Remember, go back Mariana, to Mariana. Mariana has a whole list of things. She's let's got a presentation here. What so I What want... I wanted to say here is that <laughs> we are in this group. You are, I well, you all of you are like the super gurus that understand this and oh, we are trying God. we're trying to understand from you hold on we are doing our best to try to get this but the truth is that out there and in this group there are many of us that were not there yet and when we start talking about in things that are very 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 complicated we scare we scare ourselves and we walk away and that's not what we want we want of to course not Okay, so, so when we have okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> let, let, let me let me let me finish my example, right? So you see, like for example, if we talk about the rainbow, right? So the rainbow is a certain range that we are able to observe, right? So and let's say that the the rainbow would correspond, you know, the red would mean like you are barely alive and nearly dead, right? And then ultraviolet means that you are very much at the best, at the deepest kind of capacity that is possible there. So if we call this the bite integral range, right? So you see at every color throughout this rainbow, you would be within the bite integral range. However, 
you know, if we assume that the violet is the maximum kind of what you can achieve there, and the red is the worst. So wherever you are in between, so that is something that is changeable, right? So you see, you can kind of shift and we can say, well, the person is closer to the red, right? And the person is closer to the violet. So like, if is it, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a I don't know if I want to agree with you. <laughs> but but because, we have, because we what you're saying and optimize we can improve in our and optimize our uh, healthy functional ability yes what you're saying what what I just understood from what you said is that this and this are still in this case tensegrities but this is less optimal than this and what I think is that it doesn't matter how it is behaving, it's still tensegrity with different characteristics. That's what I'm understanding. But honestly, I have a long list that I want to cover. Okay. So go on. Go on. We so we'll, 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 we'll peg it, for, we'll peg it and we'll get back to your, yeah, to your, get, to your, don't get, don't get also, I want to say in the chat, we have a request that Leonid does a whole presentation on uh, biotensegrity and mathematics. So we will, <laughs> Are you sure? I, don't, yeah, I, I, I welcome that. I, I'm happy. Okay, back just, to Mariana. Just to, de just to defend my dear friend, Lenny, that I, obviously I admire and I love so much. I must say that now I'm understanding his math even more. So it's true. I had to do my homework to first learn the words that he was using because I couldn't understand them. And once you get there, you, I mean, I, I think I have evolved a little bit. I'm far from being math enthusiast, but I'm doing my best. Okay, so there is another mistake right here. And I was doing this myself. Fascia and biotensegrity are the same thing. No. Or, yes, go ahead, Graham. <laughs> fascia is, is a part of the body, is part of the, part of the anatomy. Um, Biotensegrity is describing something completely different, which relates to the whole body, the whole living body. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm just saying what. And all animals. organisms. Yes, and the organisms. Exactly. Living and, organisms. Okay, so then I had this question because if we're talking about organism, um, something that doesn't have fascia, that that was the question I had to Susan the other day because. We're talking about living organism, and a tree is a living organism, but a tree doesn't have fascia. But a tree is still a biotensegral structure, right? Am I am yes, I fascia, right? Right. So you see, if the tree I, has some form of if the tree has some of form of connective tissue, the tree has fascia in that sense, right? So it's, it, it also brings us to the definition, what is fascia, right? So you see, are we taking the narrow definition or are we taking the broad definition of any kind of uh, manifestation of, uh, you know, let's say extracellular matrix or any form of connective tissue? Let's say, let's say that even, even if we take the broadest perspective and say, okay, the broadest perspective of fascia is just a label for everything has to do with the extracellular matrix and the connective and disconnective tissue, right? But even in that case, we cannot use the term biotensegrity in that sense. And that was my, you know, that's what, for example, my last year's kind of rant uh, with this uh, gentleman Bardoni, right? So you see who's been promoting the idea of fast integrity, right? And who's been talking about the fact that, okay, but but, 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 you know, biotensegrity doesn't seem to include the liquid component, which is like, you know, the door that I'm looking at is brown and wooden. So, you know, fascia and biotensegrity is brown and wooden, you know, let's say it could, because wooden has to be compared to metal, to, you know, plastic, to whatever, and browns have to be compared to blacks, reds, and whites. You know, you cannot use this in the same, in the same way, because basically, 
bias integrity is there in the first place a mechanical perspective of the relationships you know it's a it's a perspective on the you know mechanical homeostasis is the perspective which talks about the non-linear mechanics of the total system so whether you have liquid component whether you have the rheology in it or whether it's purely solid or whether it's kind of mixed with gases or whatever these are the things which are these are substances these are substances we cannot mix substances with their behaviors so biotensegrity is about their behavior it's about their relationships right it's about their which are labeled in terms like what is the global component of tension and compression what is the global component of stiffness and compliance so you can and that could include all the sorts of the structural components right so you see that that's why the whole conversation about fascist and integrity doesn't you know fascia and bio integrity doesn't make you know doesn't make sense in, in a way that you cannot plan them into one thing because they are they just they are just you know again it's like you're mixing the wooden the wooden and the brown yeah so you can of course you have to elaborate your from very narrow super anatomical super narrow definition of fascia this particular thing then you kind of expand it to say well is for example upper neurosis it, it belongs to fascia that's you know that's how you take a very narrow structural definition and kind of move up right so then you say well shall we include ligaments into the total concept of fascia right so she, shall we include you know then once we move up and then we say well are we only on the fibers or we have to include you know let's say the rheological components as well do we include blood into fascia and so so in that sense we would be moving up the integration of our structural you know let's say structural uh, like understanding and the, the umbrella of fascia can grow yeah. but biotensegrity is me, about behaviors yes let so me get, so getting back to simplicity yes could i translate what you just said and please help me graham and steve and uh, susan and marin and could that be translated to fascia is the stuff of our bodies and you may extend that to the cellulose in the plants biotensegrity on the other hand is a concept a way of understanding what's our, our structure that's really uh, based on the forces inside the relationships of course of so course. just right. to keep it simple, I don't know because, if that's simple enough. Maybe Mariana can let me, let simplify me, even more. Let me let me go back because this is a mistake that I did for years, honestly. And I sometimes I find myself saying this, and I, now I correct myself and I say, well, not always, but let's pretend that the elastic bands are the fascia, the connective tissue, and the rods are the bones. No, no, no. Hold on. Leonid, I'm that guy. I'm that guy, please. I'm that guy. I'm not the only one. Remember? Okay. Yes. So yes. I, yes. I, I say. Oh, I, okay. Okay. Let me jump in here for a change. I <laughs> would keep in the background, but it really is because we are doing a paradigm shift that where the problem arises because biotensegrity really jumps way further back, and once we shift it to that paradigm this argument would not exist. None of this discussion would exist because it was just assumed that that's the way it works. And what we're really talking about is the branch of biology that deals with the normal function of living tissues. That's it, which is the same definition as physiology. So all we're doing is we're, this is a, biotensory is a branch of, uh, a, a biology that deals with the normal function of living tissues. And all this other stuff is just subsets of it. So if you're talking about physiology, you can talk about the Krebs cycle, or you can talk about the uh, biomechanical kinds of concepts. We can talk about everything else. But I think the problem is that we just haven't shifted far enough back yet. Does that help? That's where we are trying. 
Okay, but <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> but good this... point. But you see, this is this is in fact this is what I, I I tried to throw into the chat even before the sponsors, right? So because you know we could have said that what is Biot and Segwit? It's a it's still it's a vantage point, right? It's a you know like we acknowledge that this is a vantage point from which we interpret reality, right? So that's how we map reality, and in that sense, since it's a particular kind of entry point that we are making is more related to the mechanical relationships, right? Which are also could be labeled as forces and so on. So in that sense, what is the first distinction of biotensegrity? It's the distinction that it's biomechanics in the most general, in the most general sense, how it should have been, how it should have been without making some medieval assumptions about you know the separated bones without the cheat codes you know you, you, the engineering cheat codes right so you know you're all familiar with the concept of cheat codes so you mm -hmm. have kids you have kids and uh, grandchildren right so you see they play games if they get tired of getting through the game in the honest way you can type somewhere and you can get a cheat code right so you see and suppose you get some kind of hairy monster which shoots you all the time you can type a cheat code you know let's say kill the monster because i cannot get over it and then the monster just kind of you know turns up to cloud and then disappears so in that sense engineering uses that those cheat codes like you know hard matter like fixed pivots like you know all these things try, trying to interpret it right so in that sense what steve is saying we actually have to go even further back and say well in fact by it and segrity is physiology as it as it should have been if it weren't kind of rep represented by their uh, like relatively simplistic perspectives like whatever electrical and all these other kind of reductionist things so that is because at the heart of biotensegrity right if, if we we'll really take a very 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 big stance a very very big stance which comes to the biotensegrity essentially is the study of self-stabilization self-stabilization self-organization self-assembly without the cheating how the hell those things which without any divine intervention how they can self-assemble and hold together whilst the entire physics and engineering is about the study of motion about the study of collisions and so on so we we, we it's it's a very very deep divide so like if we take it from the very big perspective so that's why we you, you, you're right we have to take this the right entries and see the context. So if people using the word fascia, if this is interesting and this is kind of helping people to define themselves where they are, right? So you see, we can't just redefine everything. So, but my point is that tenseg by tensegrity is a perspective. What you are showing, could you show the model, please? This model is the embodiment, is the way to illustrate this specific ability to sell the ability to maintain the integrated looped stability via the use of the easily available materials excellent excellent thanks uh leonid i just want to hop on here and say I'm getting messages like crazy asking that guy to step up and bring more questions. Uh, so I just wanted to jump in and let you all know that. I see Steve's unmuted. He might have something to say, Marn Graham. But that guy, Mariana, I'm <laughs> yeah. going to pass the mic I, over to yeah. you. Yeah, you know what? Because I, I believe, like, again, I'm taking this role of being that guy, okay? And for most of these questions, I understand they're wrong and that's exactly why i'm asking them okay because the problem is that we get very enthusiastic with this new concept and we try to go out and convince the world that this is the way of seeing the body 
and we find ourselves doing these mistakes. So that's exactly why I'm bringing up all these questions because when, well, as simple as you, if those of you who are Instagram users, okay, you search the hashtag biotensegrity and you will find thousands of posts of this is biotensegrity. And I was one of them. This is not biotensegrity, this is a tensegrity toy. Okay, it and, and it's used to, and it, we are using what we learn from this to understand the pieces in our body or in a virus or in a dinosaur. Okay, not the and pieces, not the pieces, the behaviors. The behavior between the pieces. Yes, you see, even myself, I'm making my mistakes here, right? So what I, what I want to say is that it, it, we're trying to pinpoint those things that we, if, we, if we consider ourselves, we're going to move toward more expertise, well, let, make sure that you're not making these mistakes, right? Um, I'm going to ask, can we have biotensegrity in a molecule? Yes, the same principles apply to all living. Wait, living but in a molecule, in a molecule, Graham, tensegrity we can have in a molecule. Biotensegrity we cannot I'll have say, it in a molecule. I'll say, this, I'll say the same principles apply in a molecule as they do to a full organism. Whether or not you call that biotensegrity or not is another thing, but the same principles apply. But if, but if yeah. rubber with the principles of tensegrity apply... Yep to why the planets hang out where they do in their orbits, tensegrity. But that's okay. not biotensegrity, that's not biological. And okay. a molecule itself, uh, NaCl, salt. Salt is not alive, it's not biological. But the principles of physics that apply when we look at tensegrity apply throughout. Is that, what do you think, Graham? Well, we have molecules in the body. So if we study the whole organism, we can work our way down the scale, say. Mm -hmm. At what point do you say, this is biotensegrity and this isn't? I think that's a mo moot point, perhaps for another day. We have well, RNA I, and I, DNA I, and I, collagen yeah, and all those things. I think it's a difficult question in a, in a difficult, not in a, it just kind of, it leads us very far, right? Because in fact- Because now you're asking what is life? Where does life start? Where does it go from, from a molecule to a living? Uh, I would say, I would say if a molecule is part of a living system, then it is part of biotensegrity. If it's not part of the living system, then it isn't. It then just is tensegrity. But once it, it part of a living system, then it would have to be biotensegrity. So so that's that's yeah. clear and simple. Then yeah, on the exactly. Others. Look, you know, Yap van der Waal, he has a wonderful explanation about the about the burger, right? So you see that you uh, once you have taken you know the burger and started to chew it. So you see when the burger was outside you, that was a burger which was consisting of whatever you know, like. It has a different personality. But once you have sort of started eating the burger and then it went into your system, right? So you see, as you are digesting, you are deburgerizing the burger and making it part of your living system, right? So you see, in that sense, like even though the formula is the same, it becomes yours, right? And for me, actually, this is one of the points that I would continue to emphasize i honestly i don't like the definition from viruses to vertebrates for me this is tens engineering tensegrity in biology i prefer from vertebrates to viruses right because it's the most complex thing is actually to explain the thought the whole you know you cannot rise up you can only descent so but it's it's really moving us way too far i think from that you know it's uh, our conversation will will steer away Let, let's keep to the yeah. to the more basic things yeah no but if i go to the other spect like to the other end can i have mm -hmm. biotensegrity i don't know in the stars or in the universe Look, no no this is not this is not no, because Look, it's this not is a living organism. 
this is a choice that we make, right? So you see, it depends on how we define, right? So what we are saying, because at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, we are like, have to distinguish two things, biotensegrity, right? So this is the biological applications of their more general synergetic geometry by Buckmin of Buckminster Fuller. Right, so in that sense, we are saying that they are taking the the whole paradigm of synergetics as first described and brought by Buckminster Fuller, and that particular philosophical system and that geometry we are applying to the specific range of biology. That's how I understand it. So the question whether, but of course, Fuller himself his synergetic geometry is applicable. It gives its own interpretation of the astro, you know, astrophysical scale. It gives its own interpretation of the nano physical scale and so on. But we are kind of, that's why I think we are dividing the two. So the total synergetics as a kind of paradigm in itself, we keep it in the background and we define biotensegrity as their specific range of application of that synergetic perspective to the to biology. That's how I see. And let me just share what Craig Niven has written in the chat here. Tensegrity is to biotensegrity as letters are to words. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not sure. To a certain extent. I have. I do have more questions from the chat. Actually. Yes. Yes. Go let's ahead. get to because, that guy. Yes. Again, that guy. We and hey, audience out there, help me to be that guy. So post in the comments your questions because you, I know you have them. I'm not the only one. It's gonna be all like gonna, I'm gonna receive like thousands of emails, Mariana. You are so naive. That's the word that Mr. Bloom used with me. <laughs> yeah, naive, okay. yes. yes, okay, I'm doing my best here. All right, so um, there was a conversation. I think Aileen pointed out that Susan at one point, she said that the fascia wasn't more to biotensegrity as the spleen. Uh, and I understood that the, uh, in a perfect way. I don't know if you remember the example that I used of my yellow with the fruits inside. And in the end, everything is, in that biotensegrity system, it's a fake one, right? So, Susan, can you tell me um, if I'm like if I would say no, there is no there is no relation between the spleen and the biotensegrity in my body? How would you correct that? Yeah, yeah. I I went into the chat and I put no more and no less, right? Because if you think of a virus or you think of a um, uh, a, a paramecium, or you think of a um, fungus, or or any organism that's not that's not an animal, right? And there are <laughs> most of the living things around us are not animals. That's a small category of life, and um, and so biotensegrity is that larger category that is looking at how living things behave and function and what allows, what it is about their structural relationships that allow them to behave and function in the optimal ways that they do, right? And so, and so it, yes, it has to do with the spleen and the fascia and your right toenail and on your little pinky toe and whatever, it has to do with all of that. But a, the, a biotensegrity is a much, much larger umbrella within which we have this, I, from my perspective, and I am not an anatomist or a scientist, but from my perspective, we have this problematic word, fascia, which is problematic in part because of its history. And I wonder if perhaps a completely different word is needed because when, I, I don't quite know what I think about, and Steve Graham can tell us what they think about Leonid, Chris, 
but you know, and Doug somewhere here, I think just listening, but the point is a one celled organism has a certain structure. As soon as you have an organism that's more than one cell, and again, any organism, not just animals, you have a situation where there is a structural entity, a functional structural entity that is that has more than one cell. Those cells are cells, or however we define cells, that's another fuzzy territory, right? But then yeah. there's a structural entity at a higher scale level than the cell. So you've got two scale levels now, at least, if not many more. But at the very least, you have two scale levels. So whenever you have two or more cells, you have something that keeps them as a one. Now, what is that thing in a tree, in a, in a, in a tree that's sprouting? What is that thing? What is that stuff? And we can't quite call it fascia, right? Because then it would be limited to animals. So Steve, are you talking? Well, it, it just it's sort of a why not is that I, in that talk I gave when it, the, in the uh, video I did, I defined fascia as parenchyma and then everything else is fascia. So the parenchyma are the cellular components and everything else is fascia. And I agree with you that if you, if you have two cells, you have to have fascia that connects them. Even if they're, and, we use this word fascia, but even in a tree root. Yes, but fascia, not, yeah, using it in a broader sense, fascia is yeah. fascia. It's whatever connects two cells, two or more cells together. And just connects them at the same time. Right. Yeah. Helps them maintain their, their uh, separate identities within an organismic thing, which has its own individual identity. And here we're getting back to language again, different, how do you say it? it's a different worlds, different people will think of different things when they hear the word fascia, just as different people, depending on their uh, colleagues, depending on their work, what their cultural lens is, will think of stress as something completely different. The, the physicist thinks of stress as different than the yoga teacher or the psychologist. So when we're using the word fascia and we can define it amongst ourselves. And I think we also know in the fascia community, there's discussions about what that means. So when we're talking about it, we need to be really clear what we mean. Let me, I'm well, going uh, to no, go ahead, Maria. Yeah. No, like, uh, because th this is something that uh, coming from a very simplistic and naive mind like mine, I, and I see it now and I said, no, it's not like that, but it took me a while to get it. And I want to emphasize this because many, many times we see this. It's the straws are the bones and the elastic bands are the rubber and are the fascia. This is the biotensegrity. And then you, you see like what I've learned, you zoom in and within this trot, you will have a tensegrity. This is not a life, so this is not biotensegrity. But if you go in, zoom in your body, you're gonna see biotensegrity in your bones. You're gonna see like, and something that is tensional can be compressional depending on what's going on. So we cannot take as simple as, oh, whatever is hard is the compressional element, whatever is soft is the tensional element, because it's not like that. It depends on one specific moment what's happening with those structures. I'm seeing here, Patricia is asking, can I analyze the parts of a bi biological system to better understand biotensegrity? Well, look, you see, I think that that's, you know, we, 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 we have to, like, we, we, we took some spectrum, but we, we clearly have to, to get some, you know, like, to get a goal there, right? So you see, like, what at least we want to achieve by this conversation? What are the worst and the most misleading misconceptions, which are actually, you know, because some of those discussions that we're having, they're very open, right? And they're kind of opening the conversations further and lead people to further exploration and better understanding. But some of the misconceptions there are outright closing, right? So you see the converging and the diverging. So diverging, let's kind of keep them, you know, open. But the worst thing 
is to see this as a structure. That's the worst thing that we have to deal with, right? So you see, like when you, you touch the, this, when, this, when people say this is the bone and this is the muscle, that kind of thing. This is the worst, worst, worst. You know, like this is the this is this is not just worse. This is just horrible. You know, like this okay, is like. Okay, but hold on, Mariana, you have it on the this guy list, the that guy list, right? Yes. Yeah, like it, but but go ahead because I think this is a good point because it's when yeah. you're so, talking about the structure, but about the so force. So the I thing is that out. when we when you know, like I would emphasize two points, right? I love the animals, I love the zoology, but screw them, you know. <laughs> the only thing that we can possibly study are humans, okay? So screw the animals, you know, like let's not drag them into this conversation, you know. <laughs> Animals, 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 we can only observe, we cannot feel them, right? Humans, you are all body workers, you're all people who touch humans. So with humans, you can explore so much more. You can feel the hidden states and so on. So let's get those freaking animals away, you know, like let's not mix them. Yeah. Humans, okay? So that's the first part, humans. And the second thing, we are people who are not allowed right so you see we are sticking to honest faults we are not allowing ourselves to cut through that's another huge thing so we are facing humans as their uninterrupted holes and the huge and the thing is that when we face humans as uninterrupted holes we face the question what the hell is there we don't know what's there right and this little thing this little thing allows us to explore the uniform behaviors which are actually surprisingly specific that allows us to explore the oxetic behaviors that you know the paradoxical things that it kind of it can it compacts as a unit and expands as a unit it has this hidden spiral tendencies in it which we can feel so in that sense, you are the system that can be tuned in. So that is your mirror, if you want, right? When you touch it, when you look at the mirror, and it's not saying I am the mirror, right? You know, that's the bone. You are understanding that this is a reflection. So in that sense, this tool, that integrity toy is as much as a kinesthetic mirror that allows you creates this, you know, creates this reflection and allows you to say, oh, wow, these are the basic spatial properties. That's a more real thing. That's the type of the relationships which are completely different from other man-made objects. So that's the greatest value of this. That's the greatest value of making those things, the greatest value of putting them together, right? So you see this magical moment when, you know, you connect the last strut and suddenly boom, the thing springs back and kind of holds on. So this phase shift. So these are the things that we can actually get out of it, the behaviors then and the types of the behaviors, which are completely counterintuitive to our, you know, like everyday man-made life with this fake engineering. So this is, we can, you know, we get an insight into this self-assembly properties, into this, in, into, into, you know, like in the, the way from the non-linear, from the abstract, we can feel how it gets the concrete. So it's a huge benefit, but it's definitely not the assembly of parts. It's a it's a behavior that we can start through this. We can get through the mirror. It's a mirror, okay? It's a dynamic three dim. It's a dynamic mirror that we can that we can use. Can I say biotensegrity is a model? Because. But integrity is a perspective, right? So you see, once again, we are we are not a religion, right? We are a science. Any science is the one that accepts that it's a vantage point that exists among others. So and it tries to identify itself by either on the one hand giving the specific definition of where we are so we are in that sense applying our field to the biological you know to the biological spectrum starting with live humans right so that's where that's our specific thing we exploring live humans without destroying them that's our first point and the second is that the interpretation the 
processing, right? So you got, you know, like in any way of understanding the world, you have to get the data and you have to process the data and you get some pragmatic outcomes, right? So in that sense, our data input are humans live and so on. Our processing system is based on synergetics by Buckminster Fuller, which has multiple illustrations, one of which would be their integrities. So, and by this, we get the insights which are completely different from the ones which are given through the standard physics. So that's what we get. And we acknowledge that we have a particular vantage point. You know, physics has different vantage point. Religion has another vantage point. So, you know, Oriental, you know, like I know people from uh, Aboriginal, from Australia, they have their own perspective, right? You know, people from China and the traditional Chinese, you know, like learning systems, the systems, they have their own perspective. Traditional Indian uh, schools of thought, they have their own perspectives. We have a perspective, a perspective, a particular vantage point on how we, you know, do data sampling, data, you know, let's say data mining, data representation, data processing, and how we make the outputs. So that's what we do. Okay. I, I have one. Um, Mariana, just to let you know, I've sent you some questions on WhatsApp so that you have them in one place. Oh, okay. Um, I can put them in the chat if you prefer. No, it's okay. I have myself in here. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I, I don't know if we want to get into this, but I'm not, I'm never clear when we talk about shearing, stretching, pivot of rotation. So that's another common one that I see. And I honestly, even though when I believe I understand, sometimes I don't have the words to define from my biotensical perspective, how to correct that. So as I'm, if I'm, you, you want to talk about that, Leonid or Graham or even Dr. Graham, 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 so Graham and, and the closed kinematic chains, right? So you see Graham, he has a great set of examples with the, you know, like, I think that you just a little bit, Graham has great articles on the temporal mandibular joint. He has great article on the skull vault. He has a great article on the elbow. So I think that everybody like, but they are not, you know, it's not easy reading. You need to really like visualize that and sort of dwell on it. But these are fantastic articles which are really giving, uh, like giving really help in, in that transition from pivots. Graham, sorry, go ahead, please. No, no, I, I, I'm not sure I totally agree with the animal, animal thing, although I think I know where you're getting from, but um, and as somebody who failed their sixth grade mathematics, because I never saw the relevance of it, I do struggle with some of these mathematical concepts. Um, great though they may be, but I have to put that in because I don't always follow the arguments, I'm afraid. But, but yes, read. I urge you to read those articles because they give you a different way into exploring the subject. And if you've got my book, then there's examples from them as well. Anyway, back you to know, you. Yes, but it. it, it but sorry, look, 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 look. You see, for example, I'll I'll give you a brief run run from Graham's book, right? You know, like as a simple thing, like for example, his example of their uh, cranial vault. Amazing. Amazing, right? So you see, if you think about it, so that if the, the, the typical assumption would be that the cranial vault is growing via there, you know, pressure from the inside, right? So that it's basically growing, brain expands the vault, which is a kind of eh, eh, sort of, it looks very like hydros because there are not enough hydrostatic pressures and so on. So what mm -hmm. Graham does, Graham, chops the thing into just three parts because 
chopping it in three parts already enough to illustrate the principle of the possible relationship, right? And what he points out in his model is that if you do the thing, if you look at the sutures and the sutures are moving like this sort of, you know, they have this kind of fractal edges and they are moving there in that sense, if you follow them, they would be like this kind of, uh, well, the wavy river, right? So if you connect it, on the concave, you know, on the sides in such a way that there is, you know, that the primary line of connection, the, the primary line of connection that goes only, you know, like which underpins them from below. So that pool, so the pool is actually going to be unlocking and unwinding. So if you take the, the convex things that all of them come on the same side, then the pool is going to open up. I mean, it's just, brilliant and this is kind of those images that you can get from graham's articles if but it requires some sort of sitting and visualizing of them but that really helps you to move from the idea of the uh, you know of the local local pivots of motion and start you know, like really visualizing the idea of the of the closed kinematic chains and how they how they can work. Yes. I do. <laughs> do we have more that guy questions? Yes, we do. Um, okay, this now I'm reading the question from the this case from YouTube. What is the role that fascia plays in biotensegrity? You see. Yeah, so. and I think it gets the question backwards, right? What is the role that fascia plays in a living organism that has fascia from a bio, as seen from a biotensegral perspective? That I think is maybe the question because I don't think, I don't okay. see fascia as having a role in biotensegrity. I'm gonna say one little thing, Leonid, okay? My way of studying movement, traditional Chinese medicine, martial art, Tai Chi perspective, is to study nature, all of nature and all living organisms, and to learn about functional structure from that. So from my training, this idea of starting with the human makes no sense. From my it does because you're no, human. No, 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 no. I'm saying from my training, from my training, from what I learned and how I learned it, and the logic of the system from the perspective of Taoism. You see what I'm saying? It's a different way of coming into the room. We're all here in this room to talk about biotensegrity. But I came in through a different door. I'm not trying to, your statement, Leonid, the other day, which is still blowing my mind and is fabulous and amazing, is biomechanics hurts innocent people. It does. I agree with that. And that is absolutely incredible statement. However, that perspective that you're, coming to make that statement from that's not that's not part of my um, formative training now as biomechanics we now have a thing in tai chi right where people are trying to legitimize tai chi by backing it up with conventional biomechanics and it like breaks my heart because i feel like the the, the wider and sort of uh, more functional system of knowing is getting pushed aside to this crazy thing that got invented. I mean, it was an important thing and a useful thing that got set into motion 360 years ago or whatever. I'm just saying, I don't come in the door that way. So for me, studying mushrooms, makes a huge difference. Pulling my poison ivy in my garden, that's how I learn about my body. Yeah, but look, you know, 
Um, let me get two points, right? So one point is that you see we have to remember one thing is that we cannot discard the lens, right? So you see, whenever we observe the world, we observe it, observe it through ourselves. So we are the lens. Yeah. So in that sense, whatever we talk about the animals, we are humans. We are the lens anyway, right? So and the second thing is that you see, there's a great comment in their thing here from Paul. Tornley. Hi, Paul. You know, let's say I hope it's not too late for you in Dubai. So where is that? Uh, it was about the fascia thing. Uh, yeah. Biden segregation requires an explanation in physical form that explains the invisible forces that coexist within the one. And currently that medium is fascia. So what I believe, right, is that what is one of, we, we really have to distinguish two things about the fascia, the whole fascia kind of argument. You see, what happens with anatomy, as Yap always says, right? So it, says, it starts with the three chapters, you know, starts with the collection of bones and then progresses, you know, let's say, you know, towards the joints and, and the muscles. So effectively, the traditional anatomy misses even the substance of integration. So, like, how the hell does this thing connect together? And, you know, because obviously if you just limit it to muscles, you know, like it's a, such a, um, well, it's like it's a representation with so many holes in it. So, and what we have in the whole fascia thing, right, are those elegant labels, like beautiful labels. Fascia is a unified tensional network that spreads the entire body from head to toe and, you know, let's say from whatever, from cell to, to the whole organism. Like, you know, you, you hear this, you want to cry, you know, like out of, you know, just fascination of the beauty. And then the same people talk about the range of motion, you know? So it's a poetic definition, but you know, when you bring the poetic definition, you have to, you know, basically when you make this, you're making a claim that you have your entire, your entire perspective, your entire way of interpretation and learning has to change. Because in that sense, fascia as the embodiment of the network integration principle, kind of these are the things kind of which I get glued together in, 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 in the conversation. So that the fascia gives the embodiment so that you can sort of visualize how this thing could actually act together. So that's a very important sort of mm -hmm. a very important step that the entire fascia thing makes, because if you are just studying the anatomy, it's really no more than a sack of parts. So and this idea of the integration and that it's it has substance and it's really going through. So it's absolutely wonderful. And that's why the whole fascia thing is in that sense as the embodiment of the, that, you know, our conversation about the connectivity is not just sort of woo woo thing like whatever, but it's, it's tangible, right? So that's what I think is the, the greatest appeal of the whole fascia thing. But let me this, let me yeah. add something here from my guy perspective. That that uh, the the order for me was fascia and biodegradability came to me pretty much at the same time in my life, and I was trying to get it, but it was really the the understanding or the little understanding of the embryo, what gave me that perspective, because for That's... me I was still seeing parts just adding fascia on top of that until I got I got oh boy everything comes from the same thing so that's where I I, I got the link yeah can't okay. get it can't get it better I think that that's you know in that sense why you know what Yap van der Waal brings is, is, is so incredible because basically also if you try to study the embryology in a standard way, just through the textbook, so even through some sort of, uh, you know, like YouTube videos, which is sort of helping a bit, it's so chopped up and it's so brought to the standards of the, of the kind of, of the grown up anatomy and so on, you, you can't really connect it. So in that sense, I think that you are 300% right that it's the 
kind of development and the unfolding and the be- and the becoming, right? So you see, it's like you know when I think in 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 German, this what Yap when bring he brings it and and so on that this act of the becoming in German, it's kind of it's a more sp- special word, right? So like mm-hmm. it's like the act of the embodiment through the becoming so that's really a very powerful thing and in that sense probably that describes it's 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 the best right so you see that how the behavior you know how this particular like invisible forces come into the embodiment of becoming sort of thing so and and mariana yap is here if you would like to invite yeah, him up. Can I, I have three things one is yap is here let's hear from him because he wrote an amazingly fascinating thing to all of us uh, last week. But before that, if you don't mind. Yes, go ahead. Because it's already, I cannot believe how fast this time has gone. I, uh, I want to read one thing that, that I found in the chat that I think is, is uh, important about systems um, from, if I can find it. <gasps> Now I lost it, but I'll find it in a second. But um, I would like to, because we're already getting a request for another that guy. Are we? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Yes, for another that guy session, right? And and, um, because because we're clearly not going to, you know, kind of get to the end of the road here, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm going Mariana, to you are popular that guy, right? So you but, see that. But, but but I sort of want to hear. I know Mariana's got a, like a list of questions. I know we don't have time to answer them all. We can add. I would like to just hear the list, and because she did a lot of research on that, or at least five or six from it. And we no. have it from. Um, you know what, Susan, the thing is that I basically what I what I did when I was getting ready for this was to when we are first, I want to say thank you for all of you or us who are daring to use the word biotensegrity. I think that's the, the the moment we say this word is out there and let me try to integrate that into what I'm doing. That's the first step better than those who are I don't want to hear about it. Right. So in that sense, I, I'm grateful and I think it, it's good. Uh, and then I, I see myself, and again, I'm pretending today to be in that guy, but I am truly that guy. I'm, I'm still thinking that I'm getting it and I'm like, oh my God, I'm not. So the, basically what, what I want, I think the summary here would be, it's not simple, okay? And Dr. Levin, he says that all the time, he, it's complicated. And even Graham, the same, he says it's complicated and it is complicated but we can always start. We can always start and maybe we can ask ourselves, okay, what is what I don't understand? And ask that that question and get that answer clear, even if it's a silly question. Because there are no silly questions if they're honest questions. Yes. So well, but you know, we, we get back to Buckminster Fuller, right? So you see like we all learn crap at school and then we spend our life on learning it, right? So like, (laughs) In that sense, this is where we, we, we all are in the same in the same boat, right? So you see, we're all in the same boat of unlearning this layer of the man-made structures and their like simplistic perspectives. So and it's yeah. it's a, so it's so a difficult here's thing. the thing from um, that I wanted to read. This is from Alan Rolfs. He's usually here with us on Zoom, but he's coming in from YouTube. Thanks to our volunteer Lisa for popping it into the chat. And thank you, Alan, for contributing. Without the multiple layers of fascia, and I would say of any living tissues, right? We could not exist, uh, upset any one area of any layer. And I'm, you know, layer is another funny word, but we won't worry about that. And you change the entire structure, right? So you have to go when you're looking at a system, you have to uh, look at all levels of the system. Uh, He said earlier, to truly understand, Alan, thank you for this, to truly understand a system, you need to get 
down to the subsystem parts and also back off to get to the bigger picture. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard Steve talk about how if you're having a problem at one level in the system, go down a level, go up a level and look at it from that perspective or up two levels or down two levels. And you may be able to get clarity on how you can help address the problem. So I think that's really wonderful. I want to make sure, I mean, I'm going to tell you, there's like a million things in the chat. We are yeah. now maybe, we're getting to the end of this. So Mariana. Yeah, maybe I can, I can just read here the comments. Uh, the, oh, yes, uh, yes. We will, sorry, sorry. Everybody can turn on their cameras now. We're yeah. way past two o'clock. Biotensegrity is at least a past fractal principle or holographical principle. It is everywhere on every level a way to organize. Not only living organisms are biotensegral, also cells, also molecules, he's asking, an organizational principle. So I put an answer to that one in there. I, but that is from Yap, right? Yes, from Yap. I don't know if he wants to come yeah, on. Yeah, Yap, do you want to talk? Do you want to do you want to chip in here? No, I, I think at this moment, Yap is not in a yeah. position where that's a good thing for him. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. That's fine. So uh, may I add, Lisa, can you please go down through the list and invite people to turn their videos on because some people find they are not able to. Thanks for letting us know, Jan. And I'm doing that right now. Patricia had a question. It's in the chat. A that guy kind of question. Do you want to ask it yourself, Patricia? Um, I don't think I can turn my video on. OK. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It seems like that the discussion it has its own legs, so um, I don't need to keep coming back to that guy, but I am very interested in the concept of um, looking at these that guy questions. So I'll but, let uh, Mariana decide if it's still on point. <laughs> it is on. I, I'll read it. It is. Um, it says, as a massage therapist, I've always told my clients, everything in the body is connected. That's biotensegrity, right? Yeah, I mean, look, guys, you see, I think that we really have to get this this point, right? So you see, effectively, we are, what is one of the biggest, the biggest thing? Wait, wait, we have when, to answer the question. Answer, we have to answer the question. Yeah, I think I have to go it doesn't one require an up. emotional, it doesn't require an emotional response. This is a student asking, you know, this isn't my question, but right, this is right, a that right. guy question of right. somebody who's just learning biotensegrity and they think, yeah. oh, this matches up with what I already believe. Is this correct? So I it doesn't say, require an emotional response. It yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, okay, so but I'm, what, that, what that, I wanted that to say. Is a biotensegral perspective. Yeah. That is not biotensegrity itself as a study, as a science, but it is reflective of a biotensegral perspective. Would you agree, folks? Yeah. But yeah. look, there are two things, right? Is that because, you know, with the fascia and biotensegrity, we're always facing these two things. So the, the amazement, what, is, what are we actually looking at from the massage therapist and so on? So people want kind of to be le legitimately told that when they work with one part, the local contact or the local area can spread through. So that's... The, and two ways of like legitimizing it is the concept of fascia on the structural level and the concept of the biotensegrity. That's what we, I believe we get as the most practical sort of things. And that's what, why, that's where, you know, that's what draws people into this. Second thing, but when we get to this point, everything is connected to everything. What seems to get easily excluded from this conversation is the distribution of sort of between the weak links and the strong links right so you see i i see people all the time saying you know look i grabbed him by his big toe and now i'm changing his respiratory you know let's say now his diaphragm is being pulled up and all these other things so you see like you know and look because it's fascia which is connecting it so that is justifying that i'm doing the right thing and that is like and that is 
you know, that's what's happening. So we have to really kind of distinguish this and say, okay, one point is to acknowledge that yes, there are links and this is a legitimate connection. The other thing is to say, well, how well, you know, how strong are the links? You know, what are the weights and biases which come with other link? You know, like whether, you know, it's not just, okay, I touch him at the toe, I'm going to have a meaningful and big impact at his diaphragm, right? So you see, why do you select the diaphragm then, right? So you see why, you know, let's say you disregard the other parts, right? So you see, in that sense, we first have to acknowledge the layer of the connectiveness, but then once we acknowledge the layer of the connectiveness, we move to the next part, like, okay, but still within the connectiveness, there is specificity. So there are some links and some kind of chains which are stronger and some chains and some kind of cascades of the links which are weaker. Some of them are emerging spontaneously and readily. Some of them are not emerging spontaneously. So biotensegrity in that sense is actually going beyond just legitimizing and saying, oh, you know what, everything is connected to everything, but it highlights and that's, I think, is the value of the models that it highlights the specific, unexpected, and kind of often paradoxical ways of how these connections these connections work. So that's what you can experience through the models, right? Because uh, what I see is too often people just kind of waiting for the first thing. Oh, is it connected? Yes, it's connected. Okay, thank you very much. You know, let's say bye. I'm going to do my stuff now. Now I know that I can, you know, like I can explain to patients that I touch your toe and I move your ear, you know? So, and, you know, like I don't need to know anything else. So that's, but be, and in, that's what I believe is that, you know, we need this kind of soil of connectiveness and that comes through the embryology, through the, you know, interpreted in this perspective that it's like it emerged from the same thing, right? So it's, then it comes through the fascia perspective, which legitimizes the connection of everything to everything. And then, then biotensegrity actually helps us to start seeing the specifics within it, to start invites us to the exploration of the specifics in both ways, how we take the most general and start seeing the specific pathways within it. And the other way is that if, you know, the parts have been specified by somebody, how we can, or by some other methodology, how we can actually look at, you know, what could be the leads of reconnecting them. I'm gonna give you my dad guy example that I use always. I always say, you know the egg that you have for your breakfast, right? From that egg that you know you're very familiar with comes a chicken with legs and everything. So that gives you the, the understanding of like, everything is coming from the same thing. So everything is everything, right? Uh, okay, Susan, I think that guy <laughs> has like a hundred more things to say, but I don't know if we, we will go there. If you, I, I think Yap, so many... Yap is here. I don't know if he wanted to say something. Yeah, we have so no, many comments. Good. Okay, okay. And I think we can um, we can transition. Paul Thornley had something in the chat that if I can find it. Okay. And so if I may, uh, it says biotensegrity requires an explanation in physical form that explains the invisible forces that coexist within the one. And currently that medium is fascia. And Paul, with, with due respect, I'm going to, because I know you've been at this a long time. I, and, and, and I am delighted to get corrections from my peers on my perspective, as Leonid knows, because, <laughs> And, and, and Graham and Steve, everybody knows, right? So I don't think biotensegrity requires something. I think that's putting the question backwards because with, from, from my perspective, again, at the risk of irritating people, 
It's about, I'm going to study biology. I'm listening to biology. What does it have to tell me about itself? What does it have to teach me? And so I'm not putting requirements on the science that come from the direction of my head. Although Leonid is right, we are all coming from our own frameworks, histories, perspectives, da, da, da. I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to listen to what the biology tells me. And then the other piece of this is the fascia as in the human body as a structural support system that, that I think does, that I think is there, that I think has been borne out and, and shown to kind of be what's happening, but that's not the only thing that's happening. That's not the only level at which forces are transmitted through the system. And a cell can't be a cell without transmission of forces through its internal system. And Steve put in the chat, intracellular to extracellular, that's part of a continuum, continuum as well. So this structural functional force management system goes down below the level of the fascia in terms of fractal scale levels in the system. And, you know, we have our macro bodies. I want to push a car. I don't think of trying to do something with my fascia. I, try, I think of trying to do something with my whole self to get myself together to begin pushing that car. So um, those are my thoughts there. And um, I don't think we've got a specific person assigned to sort of throw the questions out. So maybe somebody wants to step up, step up. but um, Steve, you're unmuted. Is that because you want to say something or because you just happen to be unmuted? I, I just happen to be unmuted in case I want to run. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Mariana, I'm going to pass it back over to you. Well, I think um, because we don't want to stay here forever and there are many things that we, we know there have been understood differently and it is true that each field has its own vocabulary as well, which is not helping us. When sometimes we're talking about something that in this field may, may mean something, it doesn't mean the same to us, right? So I, I, I am really grateful for this opportunity to, sh to ask. And again, it's not only today, I'm just inviting all of you who are here in every single session that we have to ask, because that's gonna give us the opportunity to learn as a community. And I agree, like if I'm reading a little bit here, it, it's hard to be in every, everywhere at the same time. Paul is talking about, Paul, do you want, you want to- Yeah, I would, I, I, and I apologize, Paul. I should have asked you to, 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 yes. to, to jump in there. I, I, I just to Just to voice that last comment that you put there, um, because I have the same problem. If I want, if I want to be uh, taken seriously in what I'm doing, uh, and they are not at the same level as understanding what I'm saying, it doesn't sound right. Right, so I face this, what are you talking about? You don't know anything very often. So Paul, go ahead. Well, I don't really know where to begin because I only deal with human beings. I'm not a biologist. I've got no idea about dolphins and octopuses and cats and goats. I'm not a vet. I deal with people. So when I teach students to teach other people how to move, they have to have some concept of what they're looking at and what they're observing. And we have tried, and I've tried for 20 years to move away from this concept of biomechanical, traditional, classical learning, because it loses people, it isolates movement, it creates all manner of dysfunction. And we have this ongoing competitiveness to always have to justify ourselves. And what I've found with my learning through John Sharkey, in particular for the last 20 years, because we've always had the same language, we've had consistency in our language and our vocabulary, and our understanding. That balance and segregacy is a concept of forces. And fascia is the medium that brings those forces to life. And if we understand that and we share that properly, 
then it undoes the confusion and the misunderstandings and the misinterpretation of what we physically see people do during movement. So we take the complexity, which of course is there, because I'm not a scientist. I'm just somebody who teaches people how to move properly. Or I do my very best. So they have longevity out of this amazing structure. But to have longevity, you have to have clarity about what you're asking people to do and sequencing and timing and understanding forces that we're asking our body to endure. And understanding how to transfer those, we have to turn ourselves into a biotensegral structure. And fascia allows us to understand that with more clarity. And it takes away the discord and the, uh, the misunderstandings and the fighting. It makes it much simpler because it just is what it is. We are fascia from top to toe. I know there are other words coming about it. And I know there's going to be a change of vocabulary in the future. But it's what we have right now. And it makes sense. And if in 10 more years time or 20 years time, they say that bout and segments are a load of rubbish as well. And there's another concept comes out that supersedes this. Well, so be it. We'll move on with that. But we have to acknowledge where we are currently with the scientists and the people that are endeavoring to bring clarity to a very confused society and world. And we're just the ambassadors of it. But if we don't act like ambassadors, we lose our audience. And I, for one, am a global instructor. And I already have to fight to keep the audience on side because they're so classically trained because they get a certificate, they get a degree, they get a master's, they get doctors in biomechanics. We can't give them a certificate in bi biotensegrity. But yet we are so bound by it because it makes more sense. So if this has any future and any longevity, we have to unite as a more foresightful community and project this properly. And I've not heard that today. And it's disappointing because unless we stick together, this is just a, a, a tea party. And yet it should be a movement that transcends us. So it has longevity. And that's my feelings on the matter. Because I'm doing this for 20 years. And I'm trying my very best to get better at it from the little bit that I know and who I learn of. But I hold you guys accountable because you're, you're putting yourself forward as the figureheads of this concept. And you don't agree. And I'm telling people to come and watch this. And they're going, why? They don't agree. How are we going to transition from biomechanical classical learnings and transition into a better concept that makes sense if the people that you're saying are the ambassadors are just ununified? They just won't do it. I have nothing more to say. <laughs> that was well put. So that was impressive. But look, you know, shall I say that we, on the one hand, I... Lena. One second. I'm not trying to be impressive. I'm trying to be honest. That's all I want. Yeah, of course, Paul. Well, you know, like I, I, yeah, I mean, look, I know you well enough for that. So, you know, and in that sense, raising the point that we have to, like, you know, when we are dealing with the field which is established and which has degrees and everything else. So it's not an, you know, like, it's not an easy uh, thing to, to get uh, through because, uh, like, on the other hand, if we deal with the evolving thing, we need to have discussions and clarify, right? And so at which point it's going to get into what could be seen as a sort of certified curriculum. So that's, uh, that's a very good question, right? So because normally in all the other fields, you know, the layers of conversation are separated. So the layers of conversation, which is sort of post-professional, it stays to professionals. The layers of conversations that belong to their early students, you know, they come in a very, you know, like preordained form and they're not being sort of allowed to the post-professional conversations. So you are right in that sense, but I guess we have to respect the the phases, right? So you see that we need to evolve to this and uh, kind of get to that level at some point. Uh, go ahead, Graham. If I add a little bit to what you said, Paul, was uh, really inspiring because lots of things in that because all of us come to biotensegrity from different places and here we are and we want everyone to be we want to encourage everyone 
to reach their potential in understanding biotensegrity, and then it goes out from there. At the same time as we're pulling up, for better language, pulling up the novices, people who are just here for the first time, we're also behind the scenes pushing it forward into new realms that haven't even been mentioned in these tea parties. And that's the juggling act in integrating everybody together because we're all part of this same thing. So I agree with what you said, Paul, and we're all part of contributing to that process by just being here. Thank you. And that's really the beauty of it is that we have these discussions and one of these discussions is the need to unify and how do we do that? If you, I don't remember if it was on the tea party or at one of the after parties, we have people like Jean-Claude Gimberto and Neil Galloway and of course, Steve and the board talking about how do we come to these agreements? And at the same time, it is so important in an emerging science to have these discussions, not to shut people down. And that's what we try and do. And it's one of the things that we hear from people who hop on and keep coming back is we go into this territory that is so enriching because I can, I can take these risks to say something and maybe I fall flat on my face, yet... I have amongst my peers here suggestions of how I can then continue my thinking, continue my learning. And that is one of the things that people are excited about this community. And as you say, Paul, at the same time, it's, it's something that can be off-putting for others who are used to the uh, modern Western lens of top-down. I went to school learning how to say what I was supposed to say to get the grades. Now, I, I do want to, uh, Gregory, I see that you have your hand up. Maybe you want to unmute. Are you able to unmute? Let me ask you here and uh, we'll carry on. Before you say anything, it's two hours, Susan. I'm not sure if you're there. Graham, do we need to do our sponsors and such before Gregory speaks or afterwards? Why don't we leave it open on YouTube because I think what's going on here is so important. And, and as you said, Chris, in science, right? The disagreement, it's not an emotional thing, right? It's, it's how we get to what, to better levels of understanding is that we're completely honest and open about our disagreements. So I think it's valuable to keep it open a, a little while longer on YouTube if we could. Yes, I agree. Yes. Okay, great. And then after Gregory, I see Carol's got her hand up. Thanks for using the hands up function. So for those of you who don't know, if you're, you can take your cursor down to reactions at the bottom and put your hand up if you would like. Go ahead, Gregory. Thank you for your patience. Yep. I just wanted to say, uh, Paul, I actually share some of your frustration there. Um, and uh, I think there's, I think, I think somewhat of what you're saying is definitely true. Um, but I imagine how like some of those more established sciences, how they became established and what that process looked like. Uh, so I, I think it's just, it's just going to take some time. Um, but I do want to also say, I don't think it's any um, coincidence that there's an uptick in the awareness of biotensegrity at the very same time, there's an uptick in the awareness of fascia. I think there's something to, to be said about that. Um, and for me, I, I, I kind of was discovering fascia first and then learned about biotensegrity. And, you know, the previous model was parts, you know, mus muscles were separate from bones and, and bones were, you know, we didn't even acknowledge fascia, right? Um, but now I think fascia is showing us that things are much more connected. And for me, that kind of, segue me into, okay, whoa, this thing is way bigger. We're actually biotensegral. And Fasha, I, I kind of understand where you're coming from and what you're saying. Um, but at the same time, Fasha is just a component of our biotensegral structure. And I think of it like this whole cup is one cup, but you can, you can distinguish that there's blue here, you know, and that's different from the green. And that's different from the white. 
and everything's connected by this orange or I mean, or th this, uh, this green here. Um, but it's all still one cup, but you can still point and say that's light blue. So you can, you can look at the body and distinguish different aspects about it. It's still all one thing. Um, so I just wanted to say, I think there is something to be said that there's an uptick in both of those things at the same time, but let's not lose the fact that everything is still one thing. Thank you, Gregory. Does anybody want to respond before we move on to Carol? Okay, Carol, the mic is yours. I think, uh, there you go. Well, first of all, congratulations for a fascinating tea party. That was wonderful. And Mariana, you're not a guy, but you are that person who really makes a difference because I totally identify with you. I have said things that Joanne Avison and John Sharkey and Yap have stopped me and said, wait, wait, if you're saying that, you must be thinking this. And that's not consistent with the embryology. That's not consistent with the leave. It's consistent with the corpus, Yap would say. It's consistent with studying that thing, but it's not consistent with your experience, your leave. And so I benefit so much by making these mistakes. And the mistakes in language come from mistakes in being able to shift it all, put it all together. And you guys, I've been studying this actively since 1995. So it might mean that I'm very slow, but it also might mean that this is pretty complicated. And it's complicated in a way that it takes on a life when we're applying what we think we understand. And we've got a question, wait, if that's true, then how could this be true? And so, and then we come back with our questions with all the innocence of babes. And there's not some PhD standing over us and saying, I can't believe you're asking that question after all these years, Carol Davis. No, there's no one doing that. There's, oh, I made that mistake too. Let's go back. Now, where, where's the link broken? And Paul, I so agonize with you because I too want to make this come alive for my patients, for my students. And, and I, I will do my best. And at the end of it, I'll think I've really gotten far. And then I gave a presentation at one point where the, obviously my patients were saying, this myofascial release makes such a difference in me. It's different from anything I've ever experienced. My students were giving the, 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 the presentation because it was a research study. And uh, at the end of the presentation, my students who have worked with me for a year on this say, well, I think it all comes down to therapeutic presence and Carol Davis knows how to communicate and that's that all it's in, that's all it is. And I thought, oh my goodness, where where do I where do I where did I fail? And and so it's not a it's not a matter of failing. It's a matter of saying, I love the idea of a perspective. I love the idea of let we're all our lenses have all been set before we came. We come with a perspective, with stories we've told each other. And then as somebody very eloquently said, we have to undo so many of those stories because something, it wasn't working. As Mariana said, did you see that picture on her face? That the way, this is not working for me. I don't understand it. But then we say, oh, this is starting to work. But then um, what are we really saying here? And Susan has helped me with my vocabulary. Steve certainly has. And I don't know, it just, it's just so rich. I keep coming back because I never leave these sessions without learning at least one and usually many more than one thing new or a change of perspective or an improvement on how I can say what I was trying to say before. So thank you so much for playing the game. I don't like particularly like the guy part, but I do like the that. And um, I want to encourage us to continue on. And if I've got frustration, someday you must listen to Yap talk about his frustration with his phenomenology and trying to, to talk about the experiencing and coming from the embryo. So many of you have mentioned him here, the, the, the difference he's made in your ability to recognize how this all comes from the, the, the meso and what difference that makes. So 
thank you again. That's enough for me. Can I just um, add on to what Carol has said regarding YAP? And Susan's also mentioned that YAP did send us all a paper, an, an essay that he wrote after last week. If you receive this week's uh, newsletter, you will have received that. If you did not, you can always find the newsletter by going to the to our Biotensegrity Archive Facebook page and scroll down the list. You can find the newsletter and then you will be able to find that. And it's well worth a read. And also we can provide the link again this week. We oh, sure. great. We yeah, should okay. do it several times, you know, let's say, you know, remember, we have to remember that all these things, you know, emails have 30% deliverability, Facebook has 5% deliverability, so we should be more brave with that. So, but Carol, yeah, but I we think need more what... volunteers. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. we're, we're, we can or only do so much, Leon. <laughs> or maybe automation, you know. We have oh, to you can automate what, it, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm not, but I mean, uh, let me find out. So, but Carol, I think that this is really wonderful point, especially, well, I mean, for me, especially the one that you started, that if you say that, mm, that means that you think this, and how, if you, when you think this, how does that relate to that? So this is exactly this process of, saying what you mean meaning what you say what you actually imply by this how if you you know if you believe in that or if you think that how can you possibly you know think this way so this kind of that's what i think is the is really the key is that we are going through this unlearning process and and every time we, we talk about this is kind of a, like a new mirror like a new mirror that sort of suddenly materializes and say, oh, geez, you know, like I, I just didn't comprehend that, right? I didn't, I didn't realize that particular aspect. And now it's sort of, it, it, it has been mirrored back at me and say, mm, well, probably, you know, I have to, but once you pull one thing, it's connected, right? So then you have to re think and reshuffle the whole chain of the of the other thoughts so that's that's the difficult part and getting back to what paul was saying so this is one of the the conversations that we're kind of having in the background and i really believe is that at some point we will need to sort of see the bite integrity as the umbrella and i mean personally i think that in in that respect we are coming it you know we really have to see this kind of triangulation there so in a way that if we want to if we use the same term without further distinction to try to do the scientific bridge experiential learning and actually like pragmatic applications this is way too much to ask you know let's say under the same you know like within the same word and that's why eventually i think that we will need to kind of bring a tetrahedron of sorts, right? So you see when, or uh, when we would be talking, or the loop of sorts, when we're talking about the specific scientifically oriented, you know, part of the biotensegrity, specific experiential and educational, and specific, you know, pragmatic one, which is really looking for the applications and the new ways of uh, you know basically therapies movements and so on so uh, for, for me that's one of the key things that grew out of it is like it's like the thing is bursting it seems and we 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 have to sort of find the puzzle in such a way that we'll be able to like sort of yeah orient those goals separately because these are demands which are which are very hard to unify right so you see find the curriculum we want this for the for the beginners right so you see or give us the clean clean way how to convert this conversation in conversations into their practical applications and then somebody else say, oh, you know, like we want the communication with the real sciences, right? So you say, what do the real scientists say about it, right? But, you know, you can't show them the same, you can't, these are all different, you know, interfaces and facets, and you cannot show them the same thing, you know? Is it Otherwise fair to they will, say, is it yeah. fair to say that it's, it's just too young, the whole thing? 
to be there? You can say that. You know, but uh, at the same time, I believe that this is the kind of question that I raised is that, uh, you know, we have to realize one of the biggest thing is that fundamentally we are linked to Fuller, right? Buckminster Fuller, we are linked to him. And that is a difficult part. So on, you know, like the perspectives on Fuller vary dramatically. So from being, uh, you know, like uh, American Leonardo and uh, the under-recognized genius to, you know, let's say that was a self-absorbed prick who was just kind of uh, commoditized, who was just uh, appropriating the, the thoughts of his students. You know, it's, uh, it's a whole range and uh, the thing is that we have to realize that his work and, you know, like the basics of the tensegrity in that sense and tensegrity, as I keep repeating, and I, it took me 10 years to realize it, right? Tensegrity is the other side of the coin from synergies. Tensegrity is operationalizing their bigger idea of synergy. So it doesn't, it has never been meant, it has never meant to be alone. You know, the bigger idea is systems and synergy. What makes, you know, what makes the gain, right? So you see how out of the parts becomes, you know, the whole emerges, which is much bigger and much bigger in most practical sense. So that's really, you know, the, the, syn the synergetic perspective. So tensegrity is, 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 is like two sides of the coin there. Steve, you are with the hand. Go ahead. You know, like you raise Hang the on, hand. You're muted. You're muted, yes, Steve. Uh, unmute. Okay, Steve, we need you to start again and unmute. Is the leftmost yeah. button. I got yes. it. Well, I there he is. Thank you. I was off my screen. I'm sorry. Okay, I need to get to share screen, which I'm going to do right now, and share this right here. And I showed this once, and I think we, if you spend a couple of minutes on looking at this thing, you have to understand that we'll never get the answer to those questions we ask. It is, we have to live with that uncertainty. Uh, and that's part of the whole con uh, problem of complex systems. You never can get to the answer. You're always gonna have uncertainty. In this Venn, sort of Venn diagram of everything, each one of them has a whole series of things and there are specialists in each one of these fields who have nothing to do with the guy over here. And yet they're all connected and you'll never get to this point unless you understand all of this, believe it or not. And nobody can understand all of that. <clears throat> so you have, to, you have to accept some of this uncertainty in what we're doing. Biotensegrity is physiology, period, it's physiology. It is a way of understanding organisms <clears throat> and their whole and their systems. But there's no answer to that because we can never understand it. When I talk about, you know, when we talk about tensegrity in the system, we really don't know what that structure in the system is. We're just guessing because it's a useful tool. But we have to understand, we do know that the system is a tensegrity attention-centered system. And the reason for that is because all compression then becomes uh, equalized. So like if you, pull on a, uh, if you pull on a rope, tension is the same throughout the rope. If you compress a compression element, the structure has different loads of, of compression and shear within it. But by incorporating that compression element within the tension system, 
it too becomes a part of it. It works like integrity. So compression is distributed through the whole system. But all this, there is no answer to the problem because it's an infinite problem. That's about as good as I can get. <laughs> so us guys will be always having more and more and more questions, right? Because it's, it's an emergency. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, but look, you know, I think that the main part that we are getting there, right, is that it's it's an open funnel on one end, right? So you see, it's like on one part of it is that these are the questions which lead to the further, it's like loose ends which are leading to the further explorations, right? And what we are trying to get through this conversation, as far as I, as I understand, right, is to, to help people to avoid the dead ends so that we have to, we are welcoming the productive loose ends, and we will never be able to kind of tie them all together and put it into the neat little package and say, here you are, that's your completed, you know, and uh, theory of bias and segregity. But the main purpose there is actually to help people out of the dead ends. I think that that's what the, that guy or that gal or yeah. whatever, right? So you see, that is really the, the, main, uh, the main purpose of this. And I think that the number one point there is really to switch the reasoning towards this tensional integration, right? So you see that what, as Steve just pointed out, the problem with, con with compressions, they create concentrations, they create irregularities, they create, you know, let's say all sorts of this localities the only way to integrate the system and make it work synergetically is via the creation of the it's it's the tensional it's the tensional system where compressional elements are what makes it a system but it, they work within the tensional logic right they are facilitators of the tensional logic and maybe susan you know are we where is susan okay so because Hi, that was I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, because but maybe do you want to bring uh, to, to bring this conversation that we had about the definition with the, what happens if you break the if you cut the loop or what happens if you break the strap? So I think that that was actually a good a good sort of that guy level question. Maybe yeah, yeah, you yeah, should... yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, it's a part this of the. Was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, are, there are something on the anatomy trains. Hang when on, Susan, let me pin you. Okay. So that people, oh, it's not working. Mariana, can you do that? That's okay. I don't need pinning. It's okay. Everybody. If you're going to show the model, though, there's people on YouTube. Everybody here listening, of course, has already made at least one model for themselves. <laughs> And has it nearby. <laughs> okay, so um, <clears throat> no, there was something on the Anatomy Trains website talking about how, I, I'm not going to remember it exactly, but you can look and go there and it talks about tensegrity. Um, and it talks about the, how it's the tension that maintains the integrity of the structure. So from my perspective, it's the interplay of the tension and compression together. It's a co-arising duality. So I wrote and I said, where is this information from on describing a tensegrity? Because it's not how Fuller describes it. It's not how Snelson uh, defines it. So I'm curious as to where this is coming from. And then the response was that, that the integrity of the structure is maintained by the tension. That if you cut a string, um, it will lose its integrity. But the truth is, if you break a strut, it will also lose. It's, <laughs> it will also not be the same structure, okay? The reason that these strings are, are tight is because of the sticks. The reason the sticks are compressed 
is because of the strings. This is a, biologically, we need to, I think, understand the concept as a co-arising duality of force interplay and exchange. And so you can't have one without the other. There is no tension without compression, like even in physics, as I understand it. But I'm open to correction. <laughs> I, 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 I love, and I have to say to me again, it's the disagreement, it's the back and forth that helps us, that helps us develop this. So I think it's wonderful. If I get emotional about it, it's in a positive way. <laughs> this is my straw that um, broke <laughs> because I was trying to get it way too far, uh, trying to connect more legs in the <clears throat> torso. And I, there was a little piece of tape holding it. So it was there until it was not anymore. And I lost the whole model. Right? Yeah. So. And, and you know, Joanne Avison has a great presentation that she's done. And I think she did it here on the Tea Party where Graham sent her this model of interconnected tensegrities. And when it arrived to her, one of the sticks was broken. And she was upset, but then she realized the advantage of it is that then she could take the stick and let it be, and then she could restore it, you know, physically with her hands, put that back together. And how now that ability for communication and force distribution to happen through the whole system could be restored. I've got a similar, <laughs> sorry to say, Graham, I've got a similar model that's broken and- uh, Great, show us, Chris. I, Mariana, can you spotlight me? So <clears throat> this strut, the compression strut is broken and you can see that the whole structure changes its uh, orientation. But as soon as I, like you can just see the response of the whole system by bringing that compression level back to what it once was. Sorry, Graham, I'm so sad that this broke. Yes, but it's What's making a better idea? demonstration model. It makes a great demonstration model. There we go. And it really helps I mean, Mariana, you and your, you know, some of the images we see with your, your clients, your patients, this is the collapsed torso. And I know that you're working to, oh no, oh no. You're uh, <laughs> redistributing the, the forces within, with, but with your um, binder and such. So anyways, it, it makes a very effective prop this way. I'll send you a new stick. Oh, yay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but look, what I wanted to say is, uh, is uh, you know, we keep getting back to this, to this point about the tension and compression, right? So first thing is that, you know, you are right, is that in, when it comes to the deformation, right? So there are two things which are sort of emerging at the same time. And, you know, you can't completely eliminate one or another. But you know, what struck me about this argument first is that, you know, it's tensional because if we cut the string, the integrity disappears. Well, in that sense, it's compressional. If we kind of break the, the strut, the, the, the integrity disappears. My point is that if we are to discuss this particular model, right? So you see, we, we have a broad definition there. So basically, struts are things that are pushing them apart, right? So lines is what the, the cables are there, things which are bringing it together. So it's bringing together and putting it apart. That's, these are two sides of the same coin. However, however, okay. when we move to the next step, when we move to the next step, we have to keep these main things, you know, keeping them apart versus putting them together. So that's why the structure, which is tensor compressional or compressor tensional, right? The thing which Steve just highlighted, right, is that 
compressions, compression itself is the one that inevitably compression based structure, compression logic creates concentrations. So that's why in that sense, when we discuss about what's the key difference between biotensegrity and biomechanics in the most practical, pragmatic way, that key difference is that biotensegrity emphasizes their tensional integrity. It's called tensional integrity for a reason. So if you want, in, integrity would not be there without the compression elements, without the things that are holding them apart. You wouldn't be able to scale the tension, right? So you see, in other words, the only way to whale well to scale the tension is by inserting the compression elements. You cannot, you know, without the compression elements, you cannot scale the tension. But still the logic of the system, the logic of the relationships is tensional logic as opposed to the compressional compression logic of the whatever of the buildings and stacks and columns and so on and that what makes a, a big practical difference that mean, means that that means a huge pragmatic difference because once we also then move to the compression to the tension systems tension systems they have their own orientation. So the tension systems tends to spiralize. Compression systems, they, bow, they, they budge, break, you know, let's say buckle and so on. They don't spiralize. So this key property of the spiralization is only possible, like it's, it's primarily driven by the tensional logic of the system. So which, which brings us to everything on the most practical side. So that's where the, the beauty on the, of the, that's where the importance, the most practical importance of the biotensegrity concept comes. So it's not just a kitchen conversation, right? And when I say that, you know, my basic motivation is that biomechanics hurts people. I mean, that's what I see every day. You know, for me, it's very simple. So biomechanics is the reason why we still use medieval torture devices for the most vulnerable people in population, which are children with disabilities. So they are being put through medieval tortures of standing frames of all this kind of Spanish boots, you know, let's say of, you know, painful stretchings and so on and so on in the like futile belief that the pelvis pushes on the head of the femur and thus shapes around it. You know, could you imagine that this is a thought which is with us here in the 21st century? So from, that's why when I get emotional because I see people hurt by biomechanics every single day and that's really the you know that's really the thing that's what makes this conversation so so practical the same happens in gyms and yeah well then the people they often hurt themselves for the same you know let's say for basically going sagittal right so it's, it's a excess sagittalization so and that's the point so it's like it's just you know you, you it's a completely different optimization strategies if you are compression based or, or with, with compression and weight based or if you are tension based so this is just uh, that huge difference okay so Chris, but what what happened to uh, maybe so have you changed the format or oh, it's no no, no. Gallery. We're gallery. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe on your screen, Leonid. Yeah, okay, I mean, I moved, I moved back to the green gallery. I'm getting some some private messages here, and it looks like it's time for our our sponsors are out next, and then Mariana, I hope you're ready for a closing toast. You've got a couple minutes. As Graham, please shares our sponsors. Thanks, Chris. The Biotensegrity Party is an all volunteer production of the Stephen M. Levin. 
Biotensegrity Archive and made possible through the generous support of our sponsors. And I hope you have seen details of these in the, in the chat uh, because most of our sponsors offer a discount for what they're doing. I'll start with Handspring Publishing, have a wide range of authors and books available for movement and manual therapy professionals. Embodied by Tensegrity with Chris Clancy, who provide an excellent resource for those of you looking to learn more about Biotensegrity. Artifact Pro, who produce wonderful Tensegrity models to get your teeth into and to try something a bit different with them, to play with them. We also have sponsors from Integrated Biotensegrity with Lisa Babiuk and Matrix Repatterning with George Roth. I haven't filled the details in here. Gerald de Jong in Holland is now producing his own Tensegrity models and offering a whopping 50 euros discount on his six twist essentials model, of which of this morning there are only nine left. There may be even left left now. So check out Gerald de Jong on getpretense.com. And you can check out this these Tensegrities in season two, episode one. That was our first episode of the season. Yeah. Is there, are there more, Graham, or shall we move on? Susan, are you there? Are you able to tell us what's coming up next week? There's a couple uh, more. I, I'll just oh, drop sorry, there's more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Graham. The, the Fascia Hub are organizing the Fascial Foot presentation day on Saturday, 8th of May. Early bird tickets available until the 5th of April with John Sharkey, Wilbur Kelsick, Elizabeth Larkham, and Phil Beach. And lastly, the Biotin Secretary Congress, Congress from Brazil. We're running a series of workshops on April 23rd to 25th. And that's my list of sponsors, thanks. And uh, Susan? yeah, next week we're going to have Eleftherios Pablides who has created the uh, Pablides Elastegrity, which is a folded paper uh, structure that exhibits really interesting behaviors. Um, he sees it, here, Chris has one, and he sees it, it has, it has a jitterbugging kind of feature. Um, he sees the elastegrities as a way of sort of articulating aspects of biotensegrity and some of the relationships in a tensegrity. So um, he's done a lot of really interesting work and research He's currently teaching a morphology um, course. Uh, he's at uh, Roger Williams University in Rhode Island. Fascinating uh, guy who goes way back with Steve and has been going back and forth with Steve about, about biotensegrity for decades, I believe. Thanks. Mariano. Okay, so. For us to stay, um, to be brave and ask the questions and stay humble to recognize if we got it wrong and move forward. Cheers. 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 Salud. And thank you, Mariana, and all everybody for being here. Mariana, fantastic job. <laughs> this is so full of information for us all and humor and discussion. And we are so honored and delighted to have you part of this team. Thank and you. thanks for everybody 